Hi, I'm George. I'm going to make a glass marble. And I was just hemming and hawing with my wife, Barb, who is sitting with me, um, about what to make. And I was always enticed about making something floral, but you guys see that all the time. So I was uh, looking around on the web today and I saw a really nice marble that was just black and white. And so many times you see um, all these bright colors in glass and uh, color is great, but also um, I think maybe distracts from the detail and the technique that you could otherwise uh, display without the distraction of color. However, that being said, and all things being equal, ignore everything I just said, because I'm making a black and white tornado, and it's going to have gold and silver leaf. And then, of course, since it's uh, uh, only black and white, I am going to add ultraviolet active glass too, so that when you see it in under black light, it looks completely different. So let's look at what we're going to use today. Um, I've got a series of large clear rods, which is going to be the bulk of the marble, clear gathers like this. There's going to be only the smallest amount of opaque glass, one dot of black, one dot of white. That's all you need. There's going to be a teeny tiny piece of silver and a teeny tiny piece of gold. Let's see if I can pick one of those up without destroying it. All right, here we go. There's the magnifying glass. Uh, oh, it's stuck to the magnifying glass. I destroyed everything. Can I pick it off? I have special tweezers just for handling my leaf. So this is a piece of silver leaf. It's actually several layers thick because I fold it um, for durability. Otherwise, it's just so fragile it can tear and go uh, get obliterated to nothing very quickly. So the clear, the dots of color, the metal foil, and uh, what I was reaching for earlier, this UV active glass. I have all these little strands that I've pulled and mixed from UV stuff. Let's see if I can get this. You can't see it because I have a filter on the camera so that you guys can see better through the flame. But it messes up the perception of the UV glass. But anyway, I'm going to take a few of those out and we're going to use those too. So let's fire up and get melting. Spark lighter. Always better to have on your bench than a conventional lighter, which if a piece of hot glass gets on a butane lighter and that hot glass bores through the butane lighter side, <laughs> everyone is destroyed. All right, so propane, that's what I lit first. That was the giant explosion, which was fun. And then oxygen makes it from regular flame to super hot flame. All right, what I have next to me is a graphite marvering plate, which is like this graphite paddle. This one has some marble molds on the other side, which are hemispherical depressions in the graphite. It's a half of a sphere that I use to shape the marble. But I use the flat piece of graphite, I have a big one right here, that I use to shape stuff and roll things out. And so when you see me get the gather and flatten it out next to me, that's what I'm working on over here. And then I also have, let me pick this up. I haven't done this in a while. This is fireproof um, compressed fiber frax board that I have a bunch of little divots in so that when I'm finished with my marble, I can set it in one of those divots, crack off the last little attachment punty that I have, a little attach, attachment handle, and then um, 
so it won't roll away, and then I can power, flame polish that last bit off. I'll talk about that more when I get to the end of the marble today. So let's get started on getting my first gather, and it's going to be clear. Most of the big gathers I'm making today are clear, and when I say gather, it's um, it's like glass blowing, and the fact that I'm melting glass and it's going to crumple up into a ball, but instead of heating up a steel rod and going into a crucible furnace or a bowl of liquid glass and pulling out a glob of glass, I'm making the glob of glass right on the end of an existing glass rod. I'll use that. And I'm going to be passing that glass glob back and forth, making it bigger, adding to it, twisting it, messing it around, all without touching it directly. I'll be touching it with punties or handles, which are either glass or metal. If I want to do a lot of manipulation to the glass, I'm going to use metal punties, which are basically a stainless steel rod of varying sizes. Um, or if I want just a gentle attachment point, I'll use glass. And I'll show you that when we get close to. For these steel ones, I have two sizes generally. <clears throat> I have them cut to a length so that they're easy to use on my bench. And I have a sixteenth of an inch width and an eighth of an inch width. And you can use any size that's convenient. These you can get at the welding shop uh, as welding rods by the pound. And if you ever were to get go to like a glass blowing supply company and order uh, punty rods or something like that, they'll sell them to you for like a hundred times what their actual value is as a rod. So if you're doing glass blowing, you need to not only understand your equipment, but you need to be able to make your equipment. Otherwise, um, that it leads to only a partial understanding of what it is that you're doing. I guess that's fine too. Um, some people aren't interested in the equipment portion. Um, I feel that it goes hand in hand with the, with the creation of what you're doing, making the equipment and making the craft out of the medium. So here, I'm melting this medium size clear glass rod. You can see it's molten, it's fluffing down and around. I'm gonna melt it more until it forms into a ball. Then I'm gonna squish it flat and use that disc to pick up my first piece of metal, which will be the gold leaf, gold foil. Mm, gold. Gold! I just ordered a new uh, book of gold leaf, a new book of silver leaf from... Silver and gold. <laughs> from... <laughs> Yukon Cornelius! <laughs> You're horribly out of season right now! <laughs> but I'm so excited to have new gold and silver leaf because I've I've had this uh, these packs that I've had that I've been like nursing along for the last year. But lately, I've just been really enjoying making marbles like four or five days a week, and I really love making like. Monster Eyes, and Tornadoes, and Galicia, stuff like that, and they use gold and silver, and so I don't like to skimp on it if I'm going to make one. I want them to look good and sparkly. So, I'm going to make a lot of those this spring. So, I've melted that ball on the end, and I've squished it flat. Now, I'm going to quickly get my gold ready to pick up. And I'm going to heat that surface right there, the end of that disc that I just flattened. I want it to be nice and hot, like just orange hot. Just turning orange hot, not, not bright orange. I'm going to pick up that gold. I'm going to start flashing my next clear rod that I'm going to use to pick up two in the, in the way back flame here. Pick up my gold. I pick it up. You can see that little piece of gold on the end of the disc. And now I'm going to put that in the back flame. 
the way back. Look at that. That's better. <clears throat> so I want to keep my disc of glass hot, but not moving hot. And and uh, I don't want to vaporize the gold on the end. So I'm keeping it out of the direct flame. I'm flashing this next gather rod. Amy C says hi. Yep, I can actually see the text today. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. Could come in the frame. <laughs> Get your face in there. <laughs> So this is a big clear rod. I'm going to put big layers of clear in between my metal and the color I'm putting down. And so the big rods are kind of boring because I have to flash them a long time. Ah, that's Sloan, Amy Sloan. Yeah. I didn't get that. Oh, you didn't? No. Okay. Yeah, I was just checking out some of her photos from the past year, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I was just watching one of her kids. She posted one of her kids just like yesterday, and oh, really? before Anushka, Anushka was doing something, and I was, I can't remember. There was another one about their dog. Okay, the dog one rings a bell. I have a lot of people muted right now. <laughs> Politics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if I don't have you muted, that means you've been posting like real stuff about what you are actually like as a person, not weird politics stuff. <laughs> Which is why I'm on Facebook to see what my friends are doing pictures of their kids and dogs and art projects and that kind of stuff. Cool stuff. Stuff that really matters. All right. My gather is going finally. <laughs> so I'm going to cover up this gold, which I've been keeping warm. And let's see if I can do it on the camera here. Clear on there. Get, my, get in my flame to separate it. And then now I'm going to shape it really quick while it's still hot. So that's my next layer. Now I'm going to put on that one dot of white that I was talking about. Just a teeny tiny baby dot of white. So small. But it's going to look like so much when I'm done messing around with it. So here we go, one little dot. And uh, your marbles, or any glasswork you do, it's very important that you make the correct sound effect as you work. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't do that, it's not gonna come out right. <laughs> So now I got my my white dot. I got the shirt and focus here. Now I'm going to add some UV glass around the perimeter of that white dot, and then we're going to melt that in. I'm going to press it a little bit flat. gotten kind of cold and stiff, so I'm going to heat up my whole... It kind of looks works. like there's two bumps. Is that on purpose? Uh, there are two gathers. So two the gathers. first the first one is where I got a gather on the end of the clear rod and I flattened it. And then the next one I, I put a, a layer of gold foil on and then I put another gather of clear over top. And so that's what the next bump is. Got it. And so as I keep adding gathers, it's going to add bumps and build a cylinder, a lumpy cylinder essentially. It's going to look totally stupid. 
until it looks good. <laughs> so that's a, an important consideration, or not a, not a consideration, but um, interesting fact mm. that it doesn't look round like a marble until you're done. Before that, it's uh, especially for a lot of the more detailed and manipulative constructions, you're really not getting spherical till the end. So now I've got my white dot and then there's some invisible UV glass in there as well. Now I'm going to get my next gather from this big clear rod, put it down there, and then we're going to do the same thing with a black dot. So you might be saying to yourself, this is boring, when's it going to get cool? Wait. Wait a second. <laughs> Is that the leaf you're going to use? Yeah, that's the silver leaf I'm going to use next. So I should, probably should blow on it, right? <laughs> you can. <laughs> I got another one ready. <laughs> you're going to blow on it. You should inhale it. It's probably got like valuable trace elements like silver <laughs> that you need. What's you that pizza that they make in New York City? Oh, with gold. With gold. Yeah. And it's like... $14,000 pizza because you can eat the gold. Yeah. There's some other stuff that they're doing with gold now, like uh, facial treatments or something. Really? Or beauty treatments where they put gold on it. And, and there's another thing with gold that you can eat. Gold's inert, so you can eat as much of it as you want. And so there's my next clear gather. So the third bump is on there. Let's put the black on there. Yeah, so you can eat as much gold as you want pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to eat a lot to make your poop sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the because um, for gold leaf, they take a, one ounce, it can be pounded out to like, they say, to almost cover a football field with gold leaf. No shit. Yeah, so. That is amazing. I always wondered how, because there's a lot there of is. stuff that's gold leafed. All the dishes... All in the Goodwill stores, you see gold leaf. Mm -hmm. Gold, uh, yeah, super hyper thin layers of gold painted on things mm -hmm. all over the place. And there is a difference between the gold paint and the gold leaf. So, so there's my black dot that I put on there. I'm going to add some more UV glass, and I'm going to do it in a, a, in a slightly different uh, radius than I did on the first one. Um... It'll be sort of um, lacy and diaphanous in appearance. And I'm accentuating that by varying the uh, diameter of the circles that I'm making of that UV glass. All right, so I've put my black dot on. I've put my UV glass around it. And now you can look from the side. And see the gathers and the colors. And now we're going to get another clear gather going on there. And then we'll put that on there. We'll pick up our silver. Then we'll put another couple clear gathers to cap off that end. And then we'll start really spinning the crap out of it. And that's when you're just going to go. Whoa. There'll be a quiz on that. And uh, I'll say, when does it get. No, I'll make you go. <laughs> I'll just say silver. You have to do that. What's the new, um, what's the best video site to post on besides YouTube? TikTok? Yeah. For little short videos. I'm skipping that one. <laughs> I'll catch the next one. <laughs> doing Instagram now to try to be hip. What do you think, Barb? No, bad idea. Bad idea? I'm just posting marble pictures on there. Is that alright? Yes. I occasionally tweet and Pinterest them, too. Just so you can say you did? Um, I don't know, you know. 
just keep up a broad, you know, shotgun approach sure, kind of thing. Sure. So when you're done posting something on eBay, or you uh, have you're in the studio at YouTube, uh, when you when you go to save something, you can say you want to post this to you know various other platforms, and so I usually pick one mm. every time just to. You never know. It's like Never the lottery. Know. Well, you know, if I could get one more person interested in the video stuff every week and one more person interested in the Facebook group every week, that'd be nice. So I put another clear gather on there. I was talking and I forgot to tell you. <laughs> so let's flatten it out. I'm going to heat it back up. I'm going to get this big clear rod. Keep it heating. Now I'm heating that area that I just flattened. You can see all the discs in there. You'll see them even better when I start to melt them all together. That's coming up soon. That's not the cool part, but right before that. <laughs> but let's pick up the silver. See, it just turned, just orange. The right heat to pick up the metal without vaporizing it. There it is. So sometimes that last little piece of rouge paper that keeps the, the leaves separate uh, is stuck to the piece and then that just burns off if you just heard it go foop or saw a little flame down in the corner here as I picked up that foil. You can kind of smell it. It smells like uh, burning tracing paper. Like if you were ever a kid. That's awfully specific. Well, let me tell you, I have a story. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you're a kid and you made treasure maps out of like parchment paper or tracing paper, and then you wanted to make it look old, so you like fold it up and then get some matches and burn the edges so it would look ancient and whatever. So you I use grocery through. bags, but yeah. That's, yeah. So, anyway, I had this parchment paper that was kind of tracing paper like, and I thought it smelled weird. And so, as an experiment, I burned shit tons of tracing paper and smelled it. <laughs> and it smelled just like that. I was just catching stuff on fire, you know. I wonder what the component of tissue paper is that is causing that very particular odor. Great question. It's an unanswerable question that no one will ever know the answer to. Here's our next gather covering the silver. And I'm going to, just to add a little more volume to the end, which I might have to pull off. It's better to have a little bit too much glass um, on your marble and, and pull it off than not have enough and have stuff that's too close to the surface or uneven. Um, that you have to go back and add to, especially if the glass gets cold. And uh, and you're trying to add a hot gather to something that's on the on the cooler side, you know, relative glass terms of coolness, you know, 1,200 degrees instead of 1,500 degrees. Um, but when you have to, like, heat something up to uh, fuse a new piece on there, it takes, like, 10 times as long then if you just go ahead and add a little bit of extra right there. Oh, that's cool. Sorry. That's all right. If it was a little bit warmer today, I would say post, demo, fire, and kub or bocce game yeah. while we're waiting for the annealing oven it's to cycle. It's too wet for kub, I think. I know. I sort of wanted to do it this weekend. Yeah. Could I tell the local crowd. We can put the word out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always have stuff to do during the time I'm ramping down my kneeling oven, but wouldn't it be fun to play some bocce ball and stuff? Alright, so now I've got all my gathers done. I'm, I'm starting to heat everything. You can start seeing the, all the layers. It's heating up a little bit more. Let it pull together. Surface tension is really 
melding all those layers together, the heat of the glass is evening up from the outside edge to the inside core. So it's all getting just to that point where it wants to start moving around like a liquid. The fun part. And I can really see it starting to pull in right now. All those valleys between the additional, the, the gathers that I put on, the subsequent layers of gathers are all merging together. And now, you can see the all those layers. I have to keep it spinning so it doesn't get all uneven. But you can see those little color pizzas in there. <laughs> That's just the one dot it became that layer of color in there. The ones black and the ones white. The white one looks white and the black one looks orange right now. Now I'm going to take this free end and squish it in the marble mold. It's one of the rare times when you actually just push something in to the marble mold and let it get that, take advantage of that hemispherical shape. Uh, just because I want it a little more spherical on that side and then I'm going to put a metal handle on that side, metal punty rod and then I'm going to melt off this large glass rod where it attaches to the gathers that I've put together here so let's squish that atmosphere and ta-da look, it's half of a cylinder I'm going to heat up this end so it's glowing orange. I don't want this marble to be cold when I try to push this in. I want it to be warm enough that I can get a little bit of uh, penetration into the surface of the marble. Just a little bit. So I get a nice good hold while I melt off this side. Now, this rod has already cracked right there. I'm going to melt it off. But it might just come off there. Some of that is going to be waste. I'm going to tweeze that off. Especially because whenever a glass rod cracks like that, it's going to give you a bubble in your glass. We don't want too many bubbles. So you can see combination of melt and crack. And that's just a mess. But next time I go to melt this and take a, turn it into a gather, it'll, it'll smooth out. There might be a few bubbles in there. I'll, I'll pick them out. So I'll maybe peel off any weirdness on the surface. Now we get to, I do use like probably 50% of that messed up glass on this gather. Depends on a lot of things. Depends on how you have your flame set, what time of the day it is, how much caffeine you've had. <laughs> <laughs> How your night's sleep was the night before. What kind of music is playing? What are you mumbling about over there? Nothing. Sounds like some sarcasm I wanted to get in on. <laughs> so that, I'm melting that rod end in. Now, the rod where the rod joins the gather, there's some sharp creases. So I don't want to trap a cylindrical bubble in there by pressing that. So there's a couple ways you can deal with that. You can just heat it until it pulls together. And I'll do mostly of that. But another good trick is that if you have a piece that's poking out like that, I can poke it in from the center and it'll close up those uh, sharp creases in the glass a little bit faster. I don't think I did a really very good job on that because I was talking and not looking directly at what I was doing. Start paying attention, George. <laughs> when you're not talking and describing things, it changes your speed a little bit on some of these things. I think some of these things you go a little bit slower and some things you go a little bit faster, but the, the cadence is 
is a bit different. It uh, it's th throws me off. Okay. It's interesting though. Nice to mentally sometimes pause and pull apart what you're doing a little bit. So now, it's mostly spherical. You can see all of our layers. Check it out. And so now I want to start twisting it on a different axis. So I'm going to switch my axis off about 90 degrees. So I need to heat up my next handle, my next pumpy rod. I got some a bunch of crap glass on the end of this one, so I'm heating it way up. I'm going to shatter it off in the water and then heat it up again. And I can see all the glasses come off and it's clean. Now, I'm going to pick my spot, my new axis, and heat up the surface of the marble, heating this up so it's hot, and I bored into the marble slightly. See, I'm not quite at 90 degrees. I picked a spot that's a little bit off. But now I'm going to detach this one. So I'm going to superheat that punky run. And because I'm, I'm sort of overheating it, I can pull it out and bring some glass with it instead of pulling just this out and leaving a bunch of weird glass or um, metal oxides in the glass. And I just went in there and made sure to pull out anything that even looked suspicious. <clears throat> and since I overheated this, I quenched it. I'm going to heat it up again. I just want the tip to be hot, not like an inch or two down the rod. Because I hold it pretty close, like four inches away. I want to have, you know, pretty good control over it. That's why I'm working small like this. More control, more precision. When you work bigger um, out of a furnace or a glory, you get to work bigger, different experience. Um, if you want more precision, you need a bench, you need to change the, um, what do you call it, the fulcrum of your rod. And often come in with a, another tool closer while things are being held steady. So you come in, and instead of just using your hands, you set it on a bench and anchor this point so you could then get in and do other manipulation on the larger scale. Which is a hoot, but that's not what we're doing right now. This is the tiny way, the way you can do it on your own. The way you can do it with less energy expenditure and having big equipment operating all the time, noisy equipment operating all the time. This is much more relaxing. Just a little hiss of the flame. A little click of your annealer rheostat or relay clicking on and off. It's your oven holds temperature or your pickup box. So you see I started starting to twist along my new axis. That black and white just dancing around each other. I was going to do a tornado. So that's going to be about... These are really going to start to twist and merge into like an angry ball Tasmanian devil style tornado. But instead of dirt coming off the tornado, we'll have gold and silver. You see that? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So I know it's it's like you could stop any time and it looks cool. Do I want to keep twisting it? Do I want to have it be looser like this? Both are great. Um, to get more twist in there, you have to have the middle part hotter 
and the ends cooler because if the ends are too hot, they'll just twist endlessly and you won't get any movement on the inside of your sphere. And so you can feel it. You can feel the whole, you know, the, the movement of the whole sphere as you twist. So now you can see. I'm always amazed at how that you're able to twist the middle of it without twisting the ends off. I feel like if I were doing that, I would twist too fast on the end bits, mm -hmm. and it would twist the rods right off the ends of the yeah. sphere. So for most of the twists I'm doing, I'm turning everything, and then I'm just using my fingers as like a clutch on one side to give it a little tension, not all the time, just as I feel the marble moving where I want it to, the glass moving where I want it to. You know, you can heat the whole thing up and spin it and hope that the it go the twist goes in where you want, which works fine. You can do that. It's fun. It looks good. Um, I'm being pickier right now uh, because I don't know. I like it. It's fun. <laughs> and then I think I got uh, this looks tornado-y. I could go for more twists, but I I sort of like it this way. I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> and you can see the end is kind of frozen. It's it's like preserved some twist in there. And then the middle is all smooth. And then on the other end you can see it's also kind of frozen some of the twists. So it's good at um, sort of a index point that you can see along the way where the ends are cool and the middle was hot. So I heated this up, twisted it out, and then you can see that end. I'm just going to go and check that there's no oxidations or weird stuff in the end. Looks pretty nice. <clears throat> when you get the glass uh, orange hot, uh, you can really see impurities and other stuff that are going to show up when the glass is cool. But sometimes in those intermediate temperatures, it looks clean, it looks nice, um, and you really have to bring the temperature up to see those impurities. And for the most part, if you're working like really small, you don't have to worry about those. Because this is kind of big and uh, it's mostly clear, all those impurities are going to really show up. So here, Got it all hot. I'm going to go into one of my marble hemispheres. I'm going to go into one that's bigger and just give it a little bit of turning, very small pressure, and then I'm going to go to one of the smaller hemispheres and just use the rim and change the axis of rotation as I'm turning it. And I've gotten quite spherical just in one pass. Pretty nice without pressure I'm letting the glass sort of guide me or I'm sort of guiding us I don't know glass wants to be a sphere I'm helping it and I don't know maybe it's ingrained there certainly was the first couple years when I, I felt like some days things were coming out very spherical and other days where it's like Wait, what am I doing here? It's not, it's not turning out right. What was that skill that I mastered or advanced that got me closer to making things spherical? I don't know. It's a little bit um, trickier when glass, when the marbles are certain sizes, depending on the, the kind of glass you're using. It certainly have bigger marbles are easier to be spherical, and uh, marbles in like the seven eighths to one and a quarter are easy to make spherical for me. Smaller than that, sometimes um, you're sort of fighting between surface tension and being able to exert pressure on them. It's weird. You probably notice something totally different if you were going to uh, make marbles. 
And if you were doing uh, hard glass or borosilicate, it's, it's a different different show there too, different story. So this marble is very spherical on the free end that I've done. Right now, I've heated it way up to get the surface clear of ripples, so it's very smooth. But now I'm going to just chill the surface and solidify my spherical mix by using a cherrywood marble mold. And I'm going to just use the rim. Solidify of your spherical mess? Yeah. Is that what you just said? That, that is what I said. Don't question me! <laughs> Solidify your spherical mess. Mmm, uh, yeah. Questionable, right? All right, so now my last attachment point is going to be glass. I made a pencil point of my glass rod. I'm going to get the surface of the glass a little bit warmer. And then when they're the right temperature, touch them together. Now I can keep my last steel punty rod. Pull it out of the surface of that glass. <laughs> All right, in there. That's the last little dimple. You can see the surface. If you see the reflections from the lights above, you can see the little ripples still in that. So let's heat it up. We'll run it to the graphite marble molds. And improve the sphericalness of this side. So I'm going to use a marble mold. Once again, that's just a little bit bigger than my marble. Then go to one that's smaller than the diameter of the marble. Use the, just the rim of that mold to make it more spherical. I did a pretty good job. Okay, you can see all of the spirals and the sparkly silver and gold. Let's get the ripples out of this free end. And then we'll put it in the cherry wood marble mold one last time. Then we'll do the most dangerous part of the marble, getting it into the annealing oven. <laughs> oh, so many mistakes. You make the most beautiful marble in the world, and it ends up on the floor, in the water bucket. You drop it, you try to, you try to pick it up and save it. With a sound effect. Wah, wah, wah. All right, so we heated it. Now it's all smooth. So the black looks red. Yeah, the black will look reddish orange, probably all the way down to like 600 degrees. But when we see it, when it comes out of the annealer tomorrow, it'll look, it'll be black and white. So now I'm spinning it in the marble mold. Each rim I'm only using for three or four seconds. I don't want to burn the wood too much. This glass is still super hot. Now, I'm going to use that plate with dimples in that I showed you at the beginning. I'm going to chill this glass connection point. I'm going to tap this rod. It's going to detach right where I chilled it. So here, I'm just going to make a cutting motion with my jacks and the rod pop right off. I'm going to pick up my torch and polish that last attachment point. So I want that any little bump that that last glass rod left to pull smoothly into the surface. Now I'm going to pick up the mold, the marble, out of that fireproof compressed 
ceramic fiber board with this marble pliers. This is a wire tweezer that I made. And I heat it up till it's orange and let it just turn black. And then that's the right temperature for touching the glass without shocking it. There's our marble. Now we'll put it in the annealing oven. All right, so the marble's in the annealer. That's a bigger one. I'll leave that in there for about two hours and then I'll start ramping it down. And so now I want to purge my torch and my lines. And what I'm going to do there is turn off the oxygen first. So I'm going to turn off the high side, the high pressure valve. And as that oxygen escapes the line, I'm going to turn off the low side. So now all the oxygen's out of the line and the valve set is completely off. I can turn off the needle valve of the oxygen, my torch. I'm going to turn off my propane and let the propane burn itself onto the line. And when it's just about done, I'll close the needle valve on the torch. There we go. And then, uh, oh, I didn't have my ventilation on. Good thing I wasn't. <laughs> 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 I was here as backup. Yeah. Uh, normally I have a, uh, this ventilation. I don't know if you can hear it. There we go. And uh, that's because uh, the area I'm working in is basically a giant fume hood so that all the combustion gases and weird vapors and stuff like that go off to the outside. All right. Anyway, I will post pictures of that marble tomorrow. And if I see any questions on the... Uh, Text be by thingies. Jim said he likes your marble pigs. Okay, good. <laughs> then I will uh, answer those uh, later tonight or tomorrow when I post the pictures. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>